Hey guys, Ken from Temo Chain here. And on this episode of Spill the Tea, we're going to be talking about the multi blockchain future and where Temo Chain fits in. So, as 2021 has been progressing, we're starting to see the growth and relevance of a number of chains Temo Chain, Binance Smart Chain, Solana, Polkadot, and the list goes on. It truly is a multi blockchain future. But when we think about the evolution of blockchain, what might this look like? It might not be that dissimilar to the evolution of the internet itself. So let's take a little history lesson and then we'll return back to blockchain. The earliest incarnation of the internet started during the Cold War between the former Soviet Union and the United States. This is in the early 1960s. The United States was concerned of a nuclear strike which could come down and disrupt communication across the country. So the earliest form of the internet was called the ARPANET in a connected computers to one another so they could continue to communicate. And as this network evolved in the early 1980s, we started to see universities coming in and they started to share information across this growing network. Then in the 1980s, we saw the introduction of the TCP protocol and even HTTP. This allowed for a standardized way for the network to communicate and for a diverse set of computers to be able to access the same website. And this allowed for the ISPs now to form and to provide service to industry and to consumers like you and me alike. During this time, a growing body of governance started to kick in with multiple stakeholders from governments to the private sector to academics coming together, uh, allowing for open debate and policy formation that has enabled common rules for various hardware, software, infrastructure required to make our internet work as we see it today. So coming back to the blockchain space, you know, we're basically in the equivalent of the early 1980s of the internet, where blockchains are just starting to be able to talk with one another, typically through these multi-chain bridges, similar to Toma Bridge, which allows for Toma Chain to be able to access the Ethereum network, Solana, Binance Chain as well. And a lot of the, these, this cross-chain bridge setup across different chains has really been uh, driven by DeFi, where we're starting to see deep liquidity pools forming on different chains. And so end users want to be able to have access to that liquidity. So chains are starting to understand this and learning how to communicate cross-chain. And as such, Tomo Chain has also expanded its operations on the multi-chain side, as mentioned earlier with Tomo Bridge, as well as LuaSwap, which sits both on Ethereum as well as now on Tomo Chain. And we're likely to be expanding that into other chains moving forward. And when looking at the future governance of blockchain, what we're starting to see is that there are already organizations in their infancy that are developing standards by which blockchains can adopt, like with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, the EEA, and the Interwork Alliance as well. So as more institutional players enter, as more commercial applications are available for blockchain, as we see growing adoption, we're going to see that there are going to be standards that will be put into place. And these will come the cornerstone for our industry moving forward, similar to how it was for the internet in the late 80s and early 90s. At Tomo Chain, you know, we're also part of this conversation. We're, we're regularly discussing these things with the founding members of the Interwork Alliance, and we're officially part of the EEA Eminent Task Force uh, from the Litheon side. So it's always good to stay in the loop and know what's happening. So most likely as blockchain evolves, public blockchains will end up being most likely an invisible base layer by which applications can be just built on top of where developers don't necessarily need to understand the nuances or technical nitty gritties of each chain, or maybe even having to understand the smart contract language itself through an abstraction layer. This will allow for greater developers to come on board as well as for greater user adoption because we're not concerning ourselves with what blockchain is exactly. And this is not unlike what we've seen with the internet itself. So the future is quite bright. And as the blockchain industry matures and we see greater adoption, we're likely to see a few chains which will uh, gain greater market share to become general purpose blockchains, whereas others will gain market share by being highly specialized in particular industries or even geographies. For Tomo Chain, you know, we clearly have a, a great geographic advantage from Vietnam, Japan, and other countries in Southeast Asia. 
And we've seen a number of businesses that are building on top of Tomo Chain with actual existing customers, as well as, let's not forget, the credibility that comes from the true partnership, a true partnership with the Vietnam government through the Ministry of Education and Training, where they'll be securing the nation's lot of diplomas on the Tomo Chain blockchain from this year moving forward. How many other chains can actually uh, claim that kind of credibility? Very few. So the thing that I love most about this multi-chain feature and with Tomo Chain is that we are an established, incredible player with a number of commercial use cases, end user adoption, and those transaction numbers just don't lie. So it's, so, it's not so much about proving that our chain should belong. It's really about focusing on continuously scaling the use further with credible players and users that who can access Tomo Chain no matter where they are and to continue to develop it in an invisible fashion where anyone can access Tomo Chain irrespective of whether they understand blockchain or not. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Spill the Tea. If you liked it, please comment, like, and subscribe. Take care.